Hello, movie friends. Welcome back to the show. We're really excited to be here talking about one of the best years of like recent memory, 2017. Of all time. Yeah, it was a really terrific year. A lot of great movies came out. A lot of big, great blockbusters came out. We had a huge library of just solid films. Like in the Oscar contenders, there was a huge number of them contending for best picture. Shape of Water ended up winning best picture. But other than that, there were still an amazing selection of films to choose it from. It could have gone to 10 or 15 yeah. movies. Best Picture, I could have seen so it many was very up in the air. And, so, yeah. and then they narrowed it down to, what was it, 8 or 10 picks that year. I think it was 10, maybe mm -hmm. the max. I think they did 10, yeah. So this episode, we're just going to be discussing the entire year of movies in 2017. All the notable films that came out. I think we have a list of about like 80 to 90 movies. It's going to blow your mind how many good movies are in this year. It's really impressive. And we'll we'll do it in sections. We have them blocked off into we made a top 15. You made. Oh, thanks, you did man. a great list. You approved. You approved it. So it was a team I gave it, it a was, check. Man. I did it. So yeah, It was right. not a teamwork. <laughs> it was, it was you a had, James You effort. had one thing. You, you, you're like, can you switch this with that? I was again? like, can you put Coco up, tire, up higher? Yeah, Coco <laughs> deserved to be higher. So we have it in sections. We're going to go over the top 15 of the year. And then we have comic book movies, big franchises, blockbusters, then a section on action adventure minus the big franchises, horror, drama and romance, straight up drama, mystery and crime, comedy and then animated and i made sure that there wasn't really any carryover into different sections so the top 15 when you hear those you won't hear those in the other sections just because we put them in the top 15 and also i kind of just put sci-fi into the drama category to make it a little easier because there's a lot there of weren't them. that many there's there yeah. were there are a decent amount but a lot of them are franchise or the franchise the action adventure the drama so i put all the the dramatic sci-fis in the drama category just to make it a little easier Thanks for uh, simplifying. Yeah, it. but you, those, some some of the dramas you'll definitely see are sci-fi. Same thing with the franchises. But there were so many movies that came out, and I can't wait to talk about them. I wonder what the box office was that year. Let me check real quick. It had to have been pretty good. Um, but I'm just really impressed with the. I mean, there's a lot. Like there are years where like yeah, there's some great movies that came out, but like you can kind of count them on two hands or maybe a couple of times. But with this list. In this year, there are a lot of just really good, flat-out good movies in this year. And I, I would say, I mean, 2007 was a great year because we had some of the best movies ever come out that year in this century. But for the number of sheer great movies in this 2017 list of films is just really, I think, impressive and stunning. And these are this is the kind of year that's very rare to see. This is obviously before the pandemic and so I think movie theaters were like at an all time high possibly in this year. And it looks like we're getting back to movies being like this again, where we have a lot of great movies coming out. Uh, although this still was before streaming was really taking over. This was still before move, uh, studios were hitting streaming hard. Some were kind of coming out. It yeah. was, they were branching out, but nowadays, actually, I, I'm retracting what I just said earlier. I don't think we're going to have a year like this ever again. So uh, because box because wise? so ma because so many movies come out on streaming now. Yeah. So total box office of 2017 was 11 billion dollars, 75 million. That puts it. It looks like number fourth or fifth all time because wow. between. So starting in 20, 2009, that's when box office total started hitting $10 billion. Before that, it was 9, then 8. And then so from 20, 20, 2009 to obviously 2019, we had a 10 to 11, million, 10 to 11 billion dollars every year annually. 2017, 11 billion. But I think the most looks like it was 2018, there was 11.8 billion. I think that was the year that Infinity War came out. So that's probably why. Yeah, that's Infinity War. So that's absolutely insane. So 2017 having an $11 billion, billion year. It's really impressive. Really impressive. At the time, it was the second highest. The year of 2016, the year before, was $11.3 mm -hmm. But still, $11 bill is pretty good. Yeah, and there weren't – there. I mean, if you look at this list, there weren't that many box office duds. It seemed like every movie on this list performed pretty well, aside from the huge blockbusters that you expect to make boatloads of money. Yeah, the, the oh, most profitable one yeah. or the most successful one was Star Wars Episode Eight: The Last Jedi made $1.3 all right, that's 2017. Yeah, but I mean, you get Star Wars, Pirates, and a Transformers movie all in the same year. It's mm -hmm. going to be a fucking freaking great year for money. So, but otherwise, like, it came out this year. That was a box office hit. A lot of these movies, they did perform very well, even if they were smaller films. Like, I, Tonya did well. The Florida Project did really well for its budget. So, I mean, I can't wait to talk about this list. It's really cool. It's absolutely great. insane. Great, and we great had year. 
Actually, we had two Star Wars movies, I think. Didn't Rogue One come out in 2017? I think I missed I that. I think that's 2016. Hold on, let me. Rogue One. 2018. 2017. Because it's on this list that I found for box office. What year did Rogue One come out? We just, yeah, I think it was 2018. Hold on. Star Wars. It's, no, they they were playing them out so that it wouldn't oh, it wouldn't um come out the same year as a, a Skywalker Star Wars movie. Twenty sixteen. Yeah. So, so there must have been a little carryover. This that is year. when they were like, "There's gonna be a Star Wars movie every Christmas." Yeah. Okay. So they just they spread it out that way, so it wasn't overlapping. But here, just quick box office of the top hits from twenty seventeen. Star Wars, like I said, is number one. That was at a total gross of one point three billion. Then we had Beauty and the Beast made a billion dollars. Wonder, oh, Woman. Hit, Wonder yeah. Woman was in third place. Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Spider-Man Homecoming. It, Thor Ragnarok, Sing, Despicable Me, Moana. So this was a huge stack year. I think some of those are actually carryover for 2016 because I don't think that Moana came out in 2017. Sorry, the I'm on... Um, I think Despicable Me I'm came on out Bo- before this. Despicable Me 3 oh, was three. in this. Okay. But um, I'm on Box Office Mojo. And I think they carry over some some months, and uh-huh. I can't. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure when the cutoff date is for Box Office. Me either, man. Me. It's see, a Moana mystery. movie came out in 2016. So, all right, some of those are scratched. So I'm an unreliable person right now. No, you're doing great, man. But how about we'll get into the list and we'll start with the top 15 movies of 2017. Yeah, these are the the top 15 that we think are the best of that year. And, and me and Anthony, you know, we fully agree on number one of the year 2017 was Blade Runner 2049. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I didn't say I agree. You said you you approved this list. Oh, okay. I got you. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was just like a general 15. Huh? I thought it was just like a top 15 general. Oh, I'm sorry. He just skimmed it. Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. Well, I no, I didn't it. think you were ranking them by by favor. I thought you were just ranking them like top 15 do you want to do top, All right, we'll just do top 15. Because if I see this list, what it's a you, very good start. Let me run through the list real quick. Uh-huh. So we have Blade Runner 2049, Dunkirk, Phantom Thread, Get Out, The Shape of Water, The Killing of a Sacred Deer, Call Me By Your Name, Logan, Lady Bird, War for the Planet of the Apes, Mother, Paddington 2, Three, bull, three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri, Baby Driver, and Coco, top 15 movies of 2017. It's a great list. So, so changes I would make to this list, I would put Paddington 2 higher. I would put it. I put Patting to two in the in the top ten for sure. Wow. Oh yeah, absolutely. And then best sequel of all time. Yeah. <laughs> what about to- versus Top Gun Maverick? Top Gun Maverick's the best. sequel And we're of talking all time about now. in terms of like relevance to how good the original the was. First because film, Godfather yeah. Part Two is yeah. the best sequel of all time. Paddington One's pretty good, but Paddington Two is like amazing. But when you're talking about how yeah. the quality of the first film, I'd also put Shape of Water up higher. I think that was a really special movie. Um, you put that uh, higher than five. I would put it. So my top five would probably be, it would probably probably be Dunkirk, then Blade Runner, then Get Out, Phantom Thread, Shape of Water. So I'd have Shape of Water five too. So we have the same list, just yeah, same just, top five, just different just order, spread out a little differently. Yeah, All right, I respect that. But I think on this list, I think Shape of Water is the most underrated movie on this entire list. But it won Best Picture. How can it be underrated? It's it's by fans. It's it's often made fun of. I I couldn't tell you how many times I've seen comments of like it's just the the, the fish. concept. Yeah, yeah, the concept and. It it has a pretty low IMDb. It really? has. Um, let me pull it up real quick. I I think it's a brilliantly made movie. I mean, Guillermo del Toro is one of the best directors of all time, and that's you could say it's seven not, seven point three IMDb. That's actually really low yeah, for a best picture for a best winner. picture winner. Seven point three. I think it was critically acclaimed on on like Rotten Tomatoes. Oh yeah, and it's at eighty seven at Metacritic. I think it's a fantastic movie, and I'm I was really happy with it winning because I I love Guillermo. Um, but I think it's really underrated in terms of fans and in terms 92% of ninety two percent Ron Tomatoes. Yeah, what's the f- audience score? Let me check the audience score. But um, Phantom Thread also I think seventy two seventy two. So yeah, cr- fans didn't really like that movie. Phantom Thread I think also. I mean it's it's really well respected, but I think Phantom Thread was absolutely amazing. That's a well half of Paul Thomas Anderson movies are wildly underrated between yeah. Phantom Thread and The Master. Like yeah. no one ever talks about those movies, yeah. and it's a damn shame because they're masterpieces. They really are. The Master. It's such an incredible movie yeah. that no one talks about besides, like, I we talk about yeah. it. I don't know anyone else, like, that has a platform that talks about it. Phantom Thread was really special. It's I think it's a really incredible film. Plus, it's fascinating because PTA basically did the cinematography himself with his main grip that he's been using for years. They basically teamed up and did the cinematography themselves, which is really, like, this is his real, vi- this is his vision as a filmmaker, completely 
like having complete control over the visuals and the cinematography is really stunning after a, a long career of like working with great cinematographers yeah he, and he worked with robert elswit for many years so you know robert elswit's one of the yeah. best so you know that he's like carried over some of his yeah. just like taste and style for it's, sure yeah but it's just really impressive and it's just i've never seen a film like it it's really unique. There's you can't really compare it to any other film. It's like its own thing. Even in his in his filmography, that's just he's just one of those writer directors yeah. that he just creates his own kind of world. He's an auteur. He just you're trans you're literally transported when you watch a Paul Thomas Anderson movie. Yeah, you know I think I might put Blade Runner twenty forty nine third. All right, well, yeah. so we'll we'll talk about them a little bit individually. Yeah, yeah, Blade yeah. Runner twenty forty nine. I'm putting it at my number one. Anthony's putting it at number four. Like you three. Just, three, like you just said. Yeah. Directed by Denis Villeneuve. Starring Ryan Gosling, Harrison Ford. No one thought that anyone could make a sequel to the original Blade Runner, but somehow Denis pulled it off and proved himself to be not only one of the best filmmakers today, but one of the most incredible visionaries for film today in terms of taking these incredibly huge ideas and science fiction theories and, and stories and just translating them to a contemporary setting for modern audiences was astounding, and not to mention the incredible production design and also cinematography from our boy Roger Deakins. And Gosling did a great job as as leading this film. And I loved I love this script. I think it's an amazing script. And I think it's in in some ways a better script than the first one. Because it's a it's a sequel. It's like how are you gonna do sequels? There's gonna, gonna be another Blade Runner. Then we realize the Blade Runner is actually also an Android, which I think was a great concept. And the themes of humanity and what it means to be human are so resonant within the film. It's really very deep and you don't we don't really get movies this big in scale with these kinds of ideas and this kind of creativity uh and it's it i don't i mean it's rare to see a movie like this to me made with such a big budget to, but to have so much artistic integrity it's really special it's really amazing and roger deakins becoming like a master of digital cinematography and this is like a shining example of that and ironically he didn't he got nominated for the oscar so many years in a row so not in a row just so many times Never won, and then bam, bam, Skyfall, Blade Runner 2049, he wins them. And it's like, oh, finally he gets the recognition he deserves. It's like Martin Scorsese yeah. finally getting an Oscar exactly. after decades of incredible work. Yeah, it's a and stunning I mean, movie. In terms of legacy sequels, it's got to be the best one in terms of like a sequel after a long period of time, having some original cast members come back. Like, yeah. No one's done it like Blade Runner And also because the sequel, it's a sequel to a classic, mm -hmm. and that's like you wouldn't expect the sequel to a classic from 30 years ago to be – just as good, maybe even better. And then we got talk on Maverick. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on to Dunkirk, which was the first real biographical or, or nonfiction kind of film that Chris Nolan made, talking about the World War II and the situation that happened at Dunkirk with the Germans surrounding... Wait, Inception wasn't based on... <laughs> surrounding <laughs> French and British soldiers in on the beaches of France. Incredible film. It might be his best directed movie it was flawless. Seeing it in 70 millimeter projection at IMAX was one of my favorite movie theater experiences of all time. Great cast, shockingly minimal dialogue, just great imagery. And then the triptych storytelling of of all the different areas. So we have at land, it's taking place at about a week. Then at sea, it's about a day. And in the sky, it's about an hour. So combining all these different speeds of time and lengths of time in his storytelling was just really complicated but he pulled it off so well i this i have this at number one for this year i think it's a really remarkable film because it's basically pure filmmaking like you said the so so little dialogue it's really all about just back to the basics of how to make a film in terms of the techniques it's just visual and audio and we don't need a ton of dialogue to explain what's going on it's just purely cinema and it's just remarkable the dog fighting sequences are Un it's just like I was watching that couldn't completely awestruck and I love the triptych storytelling but uh, Hoyt's cinematography is really incredible it has like one of the best shots in recent memory of of hit the kid on the sand as bombs are going off behind it's uh, in the background it's just really stunning it's it's I think it's the visually the best movie Nolan has made possibly um, but in terms of like I love war movies and I've seen basically all of them but I had never seen one like this before and that's what makes it really special. Then we have Phantom Thread, written and directed by Paul Thomas Anderson, starring the GOAT, Daniel Day-Lewis, as what's his, uh, something Reynolds, Reynolds, Woodcock. Reynolds Woodcock. And this movie's absolutely beautiful, stunning, incredible cinematography. We were talking about the music by Johnny Greenwood is also sensational as well. Mm -hmm. Incredible and underrated performance by Daniel Day-Lewis. I think it's just like the kind of the story, it, it turns people off to seeing it, I guess, because they, they've seen Daniel Day-Lewis do... 
uh, Bill the Butcher and then Daniel Plainview and these crazy characters. A lot of people are like, think, I don't want to watch him play a seamstress and a, co- and, a, and, a, and, a, and a designer. Yeah. But it's really an incredible character that he created and with uh, Paul Thomas Anderson and, and just genius writing. Incredible, incredible script. And, and Vicky just, Creeps is great in, as well yeah. as the supporting actor and but it's it's a it's a movie about a guy who's just like a dominant personality but also extremely insecure. I think for the characters he's played, it's the most uh vulnerable and insecure and a lot of times weakest character he's ever played. For me, I I had never seen him play uh, a role like this before. Someone who's like so emotional and so s- self-centered and very childish and immature in a lot of ways, but he did it in such a nuanced way. Where it's it's just a really stunning performance, a stunning movie, and I in terms of PTS filmography, it's up there, it really is. And for me, it gets better the more times I watch it. A very successful di- designer with daddy issues who finally finds love and someone Mommy who, issues. who can bring him down to yeah. earth, basically, yeah. and save him from himself. Yeah. And then we have Get Out, written and directed by Jordan Peele, one of the best debut films we've had this century for sure. Incredible movie. Just flipping the genre of sci-fi horror on its head, starring uh, Daniel, Daniel Kaluuya, who is just a superstar now. This movie was so unique and highly original. We love it so much. We've done a solo episode on it because it deserved it. And Jordan Peele is just one of the best visionaries in the horror genre today. I mean, we just saw Nope and everything and it just blew us away. So we we love Jordan Peele. We're so excited to see his career just blossoming so, so early. He's one of the most yeah. successful filmmakers for his first three mil- films all making a hundred million dollars at the box office which is incredible and get out started at all it's sensational yeah it's a it's a crazy movie it's a genius script he deserved the screenplay oscar that he won and to win the screenplay oscar in your first movie is insane for it being a horror film yeah too. but what i really like about him as a horror director is he doesn't do what everyone else does he's always doing something different it's not slasher it's not supernatural he's always thinking outside the box and coming up with completely unique ideas that you had never seen before. And I think that's what really sets him apart from a lot of horror directors and writers working today. Next up, we have The Shape of Water, written and directed by Guillermo del Toro, won the best picture that year. It is sensationally directed. Also, the story was done by Vanessa Taylor for the screenplay, co-writer on the screenplay as well. Incredible film. I know we were talking about how not everyone like makes fun of it because of the, the, the fish man. The lady has the sex romance. with the fish is what people like to it's say. It's a Guillermo del Toro movie. Yeah. Something crazy and weird is going to be at the plot in the center of the film. And he pulled it off. Aesthetically, it is beautiful as hell. It's so great when he changes his color scheme. The color palette, yeah. When you watch Crimson Peak and that's so red and bloody and all these beautiful sets and then we're in a very blue green setting with this film and i the pan's labyrinth is very blue yeah. this one this one's very green so i yeah. and go i mean hellboy is gold yeah. and red a lot yeah. so i love how he selects specific color palettes for all of his films but it just it looks like a guillermo del toro film and the pro the the, the acting is sensational didn't she win a best actress for this for this role sally hawkins um I believe so, maybe. Let me double I think, check. I think she won. Let me double check for lead actress. She definitely won something, either a Golden Globe or an Academy Award. She was definitely nominated as well. And, I mean, it's an it's a incredible love story that everyone can kind of connect to and resonate with. It's like a classic horror sci-fi fairy tale in a lot of ways, if you think about it. And I, I think it's really beautiful. Michael Shannon's phenomenal as the main villain. And then, what's his name? Doug Jones? Doug or, Jones, Doug yeah. Jones is uh, basically... Guillermo del Toro's Robert De Niro in a lot of ways, yeah, except for, for his monsters. Yeah. He's his monster muse. She did not win for the uh, the Oscar. She was nominated. So he yeah. does all the, the... He's always under some kind of massive costume. You know, he's the fawn in Pan's Labyrinth. He's he's the fish guy in Hellboy. And he nailed it in Shape of Waters, this fish guy, too. And also, Alexandre Desplat's uh, first Oscar win was for beautiful this score. really terrific score. I, I think the cinematography is amazing. It's a beautiful story. Guillermo, obviously being famously known as being a huge fan of monster movies, especially the Universal Monsters, one of his favorite movies is Creature from the Black Lagoon, and this was basically his calling card to that film, a basic, a modern retelling of it. I think it's a really stunning film, and there's nothing like it. Uh, in his film, in his filmography, it's it's one of the best he's done, and I think it deserved Best Picture when it won. I was like, yeah, I I can totally see mm-hmm. that. It wasn't my favorite of the year, but I think it really is. In like the last 10 years, one of the best movies made. So well made yeah. and written. Next up, we have The Killing of a Sacred Deer. Speaking of movies that are so unique, directed and written by Yorgos Lanthimos. Also co-written by, sorry for this pronunciation, Greek, Ephthemus Philippo. Pretty close, I think. Sorry, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Mike the Greek. Uh, the Killing of a Sacred Deer and Yorgos 
is incredible. His his tone is unparalleled. No one makes movies like him. He creates his own world. You you feel like you're transported to a different dimension. It's like when a you fantastical watch version of our world. And yeah. this this movie's sensational, starring. Colin Farrell. Then we have Barry Keoghan in this film in an early role. And then his. AMC's uh, Nicole Kidman. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the icon, the AMC icon, Nicole Kidman. <laughs> AMC spokesperson, Nicole Kidman. It is so dark and, and evil, but also wildly funny at specific moments. And his tone is just, I don't know how he's able to create the tone that he creates, but he's just a master at his style. It's just, he's an auteur, just like pretty much all the directors on this top 15 list. His tone is like a serious Wes Anderson yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. It has the same kind. It's just he's not going. He's going for dark comedy and laughs, but oftentimes it's just like kind of bizarre and weird. Whereas Wes is playing it for laughs the whole time. And he creates a tone like Kubrick is able to create a tone where it's like it's it just feels Unease. different yeah. than any other thing you've ever seen. I think that Barry Kewin in this film. Did I say it right? Kewin. Kewin. I think that's right. Kewin. It's one of my favorite performances of the last uh, of the century. It's really stunning. It's, when I saw this movie, I had no idea. Like, this, I think this was his first major role. I had no idea who he was, but I watched the movie. I was like, who, who is this guy? He's amazing. And then I saw interviews, and he's, like, Irish. And I was like, what? that accent is amazing. And then it's Dunkirk like, the same year, yeah, totally different. It's really remarkable, the the um, the performance, the accent. Um, it's The more I watch it, I'm like, wow, this thing, this guy has complete control over what he's doing, and everything is a choice. And it's really a special performance. Also, what Yorgo started doing in this film, uh, which was different from his other films, and you see it in The Favorite, uh, is the cinematography, super wide lenses, oftentimes overhead. Much the, He'll put the camera high, much higher than the actors, and it makes the space look kind of warped because he's using such, such a wide lens like in a hallway, and it kind of shrinks the actors and makes them look small in this huge space. He did it a lot in The Favorite, but he perfected it in The Favorite, but he was starting it with this one. I had never seen cinematography like that in a modern movie before, and it, I think it was like, right off the bat, I was like, this looks stunning. I've never seen anything like it before. The comedy, the weirdness, Colin Farrell is awesome. It's, it's a great film. Yeah, he makes you, in these, especially these this, those two movies you brought up, it makes you feel like you're just like watching yeah, from exactly. a distance. Like you're on voyeuristic. the other side. Yeah, yeah, it's really interesting feeling it's when you're watching a, yeah, these it's films. It's not quite fish eye, but it's pretty close to it to to maintain the quality of the image. It's like you're not yeah. supposed to be there. Yeah, it's so real. It's so it works really well. And when Barry was cast as Joker, when we when he got cast in the Batman, everyone's like, "Is he gonna play the Joker?" And then when we saw the movie, and before seeing it, I'm like. He is a perfect choice for the Joker because of this film. If you've never yeah. seen this movie and you're still skeptical about his performance as the Joker or being the Joker, watch The Killing of a Sacred Deer. Yeah. It's incredible. The spaghetti scene. It's, it's, it's iconic. He's got spaghetti all over his face. <laughs> <laughs> my dad likes spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good, man. It's incredible. It's my movie. favorite. It's my second favorite Yorgos movie. I think Dogtooth will always be my Dog favorite. It's, it's I remember really... the first time you showed me Dogtooth. I was like, what you're, the yeah, hell like, is this? Yeah. You got me like into weird indie film. <laughs> that was an early one. Yeah, that was, was like in 07. Yeah, yeah. Is that, is, is that early, yeah. man? I was like, what the fuck are we watching, man? And I was like, it's amazing. But like, what is I didn't know movies like this existed. Yeah, it's good, man. It's really good. <laughs> Next if you up, haven't seen it, check out Dogtooth. Next, we have Call Me By Your Name. Re uh, directed by G uh, Luca Guadagnino. <laughs> Guillermo del Toro. <laughs> Italian love story and Shape of Water in the same year. Directed by... The range on him. Luca Guadagnino, <laughs> starring Timothy Chalamet and Cannibal. This is a <laughs> sensational and beautiful film. It's one of our favorite this century for sure. We've talked about it a bunch. It is just gorgeous all around. The writing, the acting, the cinematography, the story. The filmmaking is stellar. I think Luca really made a very special movie with Call Me By Your Name. I think it will just live on forever as one of the best romance films ever made. And it's I've seen this movie like 12 times. And I, I could watch this movie back to back to back days, no problem at all. The, the music is incredible. Timmy gives a powerhouse performance which propelled him to being the it star. He is the it guy right now because of this movie. Yeah, this and Lady Bird in the same year. Yeah, but it was Call Me By Your Name that really... Oh yeah, he got nominated for yeah, it. In, so... in Lady Bird, he has a minor role. Yeah, but in... he's so sensational yeah. in this film. It's a really, really beautiful story. Really beautiful film. And I, I can't say enough good things about it, honestly. Yeah. And it, it, This movie, it feels like I'm like on vacation in Italy when I'm watching it. And, and you're falling in yeah, love with Timothy Chalamet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you are. <laughs> Elio, 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 Elio. 
<laughs> He's too skinny for me. <laughs> I need like a, I need a buff guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, Henry's my guy. <laughs> Let's be honest. Cavill is my guy. <laughs> need a good, check, need check a good back. Need check a good off back. the list. The Henry Cavill reference. <laughs> <laughs> check, check. <laughs> Top Gun, <Ron>, check. <laughs> Henry Cavill, check. Tom Brady, check. Ben Affleck's coming. <laughs> 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 it's a really wonderful film. It's it's just very romantic, very charming. Uh, I love the cinematography. Uh, with, with the the film just looks. I just think it looks better than everything else. And it's the color palette. There's so much green and vibrance to everything. Uh, the the metaphors of the apricotka. I mean, everything's just really wonderful. Luca is an amazing filmmaker. This is his most accessible film, but they're all wonderful. I am love is probably my favorite of his. I'm glad he he got big worldwide recognition with this because he was just making Italian movies before mm -hmm. this, but everyone saw this. It was actually really successful in America, so it gave, it's giving him a lot more power in terms of filmmaking to make more movies like his, which I think is important. So this is a great movie. And Bones and All just premiered at the Venice Film Festival. It's supposed to, it got one of the best reactions at the festival. It was like top three for the standing ovation. So. I cannot. How wait long to see was it? Movie. Okay, it was the top three. It was like six minutes, fifteen seconds. It's funny. There's, I saw like a rating system for it because like <laughs> ovations. The, yeah, ovations. Well, ovations is a tradition, but That's like just what, the yeah. length of the ovation yeah. really shows how much the film was loved. Like right. White Noise, Noah Baumbach's newest film, got one of the shortest for these big films. They only got like a hundred in like forty seconds. Ooh, that's not good. But like I can't. I think the, like remember once upon a time, um, got, they got their standing ovation at Cannes, and then the camera was panning to all the actors <laughs> like in close up. <laughs> the new Colin Farrell, uh, Brendan Gleeson film, the Irish one that we, we uh, bought a few uh, weeks ago. I can't remember what it's called. It got like a 12-minute standing ovation, wow. so that's supposed to be the favorite this year. I'm looking forward to that. I love Martin McDonough. Yeah, I can't wait to see it. Next up, we have Logan, obviously, arguably one of the top five comic book movies of all time. It's sensational. Directed by James Mangold. He had just a great take on the X-Men genre on what the world could look like in the future. It's not completely canon to the X-Men 20th century universe, but it's kind of its own thing, which is what I really like about it, taking these same characters and what would it be like if Professor X was suffering from uh, a disease? What would happen if Wolverine, if Logan was dying? So and everyone else is dead. And all the other X-Men and, and, and mutants are, are dying or dead and, and just they've been just destroyed by humanity. It's a really great take. It's such a good movie. Never seen Hugh Jackman put on such an incredible performance in this role. We've seen him do obviously Wolverine ten times, but yeah. this one was yeah. just a different performance, and this was just something new. And he just gave it his all, and you can tell this was his his riding off into the sunset performance with this character, putting it away and, and retiring from the role. And he gave it everything he had. And the villains are great, having the the new the the new model created with the younger version of him with, with great CGI younger animation. and hotter act. <laughs> Wolverine <laughs> Chad Wolverine but Chad, the, the Sigma Wolverine <laughs> no he's already a Sigma yeah I still don't understand the Sigma thing Lone Wolf man okay okay Lone Wolf Lone Wolf but it's it's such a great freaking movie it's it's epic we got a rated R Wolverine movie something we've been dying to see and it delivered that's why I'm excited for Indiana Jones five because Mangold's making it. He's a great director. Also, I think this was the the first and maybe only superhero film to be nominated for Best Screenplay Oscar. Oh, really? Maybe. Yeah, it was nominated. I can't think of another one that was nominated for I Best Screenplay. Yeah, Begin should have been. <laughs> it was, yeah, it should have been. But um, I think seeing the rated R Wolverine was something fans needed because he's always been the face of the franchise. But like, we need to see what the Blades really do. And it was great to see yeah, that. Yeah, what are those things really like, do? Not they? against wood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we saw it go through <laughs> her, uh, the girl's chest, but <laughs> I want to see like from what the it, no, but it was from, from the back. The back yeah. and there was no blood. <laughs> it was like a little trail of blood on it. But like we need to, like going through a guy's friggin' skull. Like, come on. It was great to see the Berserker mode. I think Mangold did a terrific job. It's one of my favorite comic book movies. Moving on to another incredible film debut. Lady Bird, written and directed by Greta Gerwig, starring Sorcerer Ronan. This was a sensational coming-of-age film, just like Calling By Your Name is, but this was just a more, you know, condensed version of it where... It was more of a, a more Lady Bird version of it. <laughs> it <was more> <laughs> I don't know what the hell I was saying with that sentence at all. A more <laughs> condensed version? <It> was a... <laughs> What the hell are you talking about? I don't know, man. Sometimes I just start a sentence and I don't know where it's going. 
<laughs> what does that even mean? <laughs> It was a semi-autobiographical film written and directed by Greta Gerwig. Sensational, great performances, very condensed, <laughs> condensed version. <laughs> Sersha, I think Sersha's Sersha's one of the best actors alive. She's really, really talented, and I had never seen her like this before. It was a great role for her, and she knocked it out of the park. I love the 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 Sacktown representation. Movies aren't really made there that often. I like. It felt like. It was a world I had never seen before in America. Sacktown, Sacramento? Yeah, Sacramento. Not everyone's from California <laughs> listening to this, Anthony. Let's get some more specificity yeah. into here. Also, we went to Catholic school, so I related to a lot of what was going on. We weren't theater kids, but like we we did go to Catholic school, so we were familiar with uh, this world. And I think it was a really great coming-of-age film. I think that all around, they did a sensational job. Great Without cast, great acting, yeah. great story. It's it's one of the best coming of age movies of this century for sure. It's like this Moonlight Calling by Our Name. I think that's why we did an episode of those three films together. And it's a special movie. And and you know Greta proved herself as being a very talented director with this being her debut. Two great debuts so far in 2017. Then we have War for the Planet of the Apes, the third film in the reboot trilogy of the Ape franchise the reboot origins trilogy reboot origins where did caesar come from <laughs> <laughs> who started the war <laughs> this was directed by matt reeves obviously mr batman who's so talented <laughs> and <it> was... <laughs> mr batman <laughs> war for the planet of the apes was sensational and you know andy circus as caesar maybe created the most uh, memorable memorable cgi character of all time with caesar like i relate to him so much and i empathize with this character immensely because of how much charisma and emotionality he brought to the character and the motion capture was incredible in this movie this one i remember we were watching it in theaters that opening sequence was mind-blowing oh is, yeah the forest one yeah, yeah. And this is a great cap to the trilogy of like how did the apes officially get control of the planet <laughs> why are you laughing at <laughs> origins <laughs> origins origins <laughs> apes origins <laughs> <laughs> and woody harrelson is a great villain in this movie it, it makes me wish he did more villainous roles because he knocked he's it done, out of the park. He, he's great in out of the furnace yeah but yeah. like that's what i mean like this was like this is around the same time he started doing more villains. You know, oh, yeah. This is a, get that villain, villain era. Get the villain money. Villain money. But he's so good in this movie as well. He's great. I really like the approach of uh, how because I always watching the old movies, I was like, how did apes like? I mean, I understand they became intelligent, but like, how did they defeat all the humans in the world? And then this idea Matt Reeves had of what if it's a virus that kills? Uh, no, I mean, it wasn't. It started with the first one. Matt Reeves didn't do the first one, but I like. I love the approach of it's a virus that kills off most of humanity in this film i i love the approach where matt reese twisted it where it's the virus m reduces human beings down to an animalistic mentality they lose all their humanity basically and they just become kind of beasts i really like that it's complete it because it contrasts what's happening with the apes i thought it was really terrific i and uh, the visuals are stunning i wouldn't say that this is the most memorable cgi character i think there's no topping Gollum. But okay, it's yeah, the most relatable. Yeah. I think it will end up being the most relatable motion capture character ever put on film. Ironically, it's it's an ape, but we still relate to him so much because of Andy Serkis. And he's just really, I think, a, such a high talent actor. Smeagol. <laughs> How could I forget? Yeah, there's no topping at Gollum. Next, we have Mother, written and directed by Mother! Darren, Darren Aronofsky, starring Jennifer Lawrence and Javier Bardem. This is a very divisive film. I know a lot of people that absolutely All of hate movies this movie. Are divisive. I know a lot of people that absolutely adore this film, and it is not an easy watch. It's tough just to watch what Jennifer Lawrence goes through in this movie. It's it's difficult at times, and you can tell she gave it everything she has, every ounce of energy in every single scene. It's nonstop, and you know, I love the story where she had her own tent full of keeping up with the Kardashians playing just to kind of and gumballs. Mellow, her, mellow her out because the performance was so draining for sure. But I think it's something brilliant and genius. And Aronofsky's such a tremendous uh, tour and filmmaker. And I love Mother, honestly. I love Aronofsky because he makes movies that he wants to make and he doesn't really care if people like them or not. He just likes, he, he does what he wants, which I think is so great. He's not the most successful director. He doesn't make up boatloads of cash, but... He makes movies that no one else makes, and I love them. This one is really unique. There's nothing like it. 
And when you understand the allegory of the entire theme, then the movie makes a lot more sense. And I don't want to spoil it in case um, those of you who haven't seen it, but if you if you want to look in, look up what the metaphor allegory of the movie is, and then watch the movie, and you're like, oh, this makes a lot of sense, and it's really great. It's it's a draining movie. You'll it's be, intense. You'll you'll be. I, but it, once it gets going, it's just nonstop, man. It's wild. It's really really good. It, if it has um a similar. I think tone and approach as children of men mm -hmm. uh, lots of long takes handheld very intense um and just chaos happening and being propelled louder and louder and louder until the climactic moments next up we have paddington 2 yes directed by paul king written by paul king and also this other guy let me pull up his name paul king is actually handling the new willy wonka biopic which well, not biopic but movie with timothy Stoke. simon farnaby okay which is i think that movie's gonna be great the willy wonka movie I'm, I'm really excited to see it but this movie arguably the best sequel of all time what do you think anthony after top gun it's not no well no i think <laughs> oh, before top, top gun dark knight and top gun yeah yeah but um in terms of i mean for family films it's one of the best ever done i think it's really a perfect movie from start to finish. Um, ben Wishaw is the perfect voice and personality for Paddington, who's just this endlessly likable little dude. And it's so <laughs> funny, so charming. This is uh, Paul King drew a lot of um, inspiration from Wes Anderson movies, especially Grand Budapest, and he injected that into this movie, which I which I think what is what sets it apart from most other family movies is how creative it is cinematography production design costuming it's really so artistic and and fun and flavorful uh and you just get a great <laughs> cast of characters well the marmalade is I, I, every time i see him making the marmalade i'm like i want marmalade now <laughs> it's great it has it's just but it's a lot of fun it has great conflicts hugh grant is great as the villain it's like i saw him in this i was like wow this guy's awesome as the villain it's, it's just so much fun sally hawkins is so charming uh, Jim Broadbent. This, it's a great cast of of actors from UK theater and film, and I, it's just an all around such a heartwarming, feel good family film. Next, we have three bull, three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri. This was directed by Martin McDonough and written by him as well. We talked about briefly about that Irish film coming out soon, starring Frances McDormand, who won an Oscar for this role. Her second, yeah. Also, Woody Harrelson, Sam Rockwell, who won an Oscar, Oscar for this role, yeah. and Caleb Landry Jones. Excellent cast, really great story. This is an audience favorite. People really love this movie. It's so well made. It's so it's devastating as well and tragic and you can't help con but connect with the character played by Francis McDormand. I believe Mildred. it also I believe it also won best screenplay. Let me see what what Oscars it won. I think so. It, it's just it's it's a beautiful movie so it won No, two, get out one best two screenplay. Oscars, I'm sorry. Best performance. Oh, it was just one of Jordan the best Peele acting won. ones. It was nominated yeah. for a bunch of other yeah. stuff. I actually said earlier Jordan Peele won. It was so. nominated for pretty much everything, but it was you one of the best movies of the year yeah. and it's sensational, tragic and you know, it's this mother who will never give up stopping hope of never stop feeling, never stop never stop never stop never stopping <laughs> i can't talk today i don't know why it's a condensed version who of won't, who won't give up on what happened to her her child yeah she's terrific and it's a, it's a wonderful film and sam it was great to see him get recognition because we've been big fans of sam rockwell and he got moon man moon like this this blew him up big time like he was an iron man too but like he still wasn't like I don't think anyone knew his name. Yeah, still. But now he's now everyone knows his name and this is because of it. Next up, we have Baby Driver, Edgar Wright's great heist film. Uh, so eclectic, so energetic, so much fun. The action's great, the driving scenes are great. It's like just a great flat out crime movie that feels good at the same time. I love Baby Driver. The music yeah. is sensational, the long takes are excellent, the acting's terrific, the cast is absolutely stacked. Great action driving sequences. These stunt drivers are absolutely bonkers how talented they are and oh, how yeah. crazy they are. The stuff that they do in this movie, a lot of it was real and practical. And great villains. John Hamm's awesome in this movie. And I, I just love the characters. They're so memorable. And Baby's really relatable and fun. And the music infusion with the film and writing it alongside with the specific music, it really just sets it apart of, of what is this movie. It's, no one really makes movies like this besides Edgar Wright. We just no watched one. Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, and he's such a unique filmmaker. He is a treasure. Love the guy so much, and Baby Driver is so fun. Yeah, it's a good one. The last film in our top 15 list is coming from Pixar, Coco, which was directed by Lee Unkrich and Adrian Molina. 
And this is probably the last really great Pixar movie that they've made. And it's a very special film. The animation in this is mind-blowing. It's so sensational. I think it's one of the best-looking animated films of all time. I am transfixed every time I watch this movie. It's just beautiful. The colors, the the quality, the characters. It's so funny. It's heartwarming and relatable. And it's just a beautiful celebration of culture too. Yeah, I love the the culture that they approach uh, and infuse in this film. It's really wonderful. The music's great, but it's just it's really emotional and it's really endearing and so heartfelt. It's got great comedy, excellent characters, but the emotional climax is just like so resonant and powerful. I it just I I tear up when I watch it. It's just I think it's a really powerful children's movie. Yeah, I think Pixar has been doing a great job with recent films too is just going helping people deal with grief and death and, yeah. and helping kids like understand what death is yeah and this tough one's, themes this yeah. one's really special with that but it, it's sensational the music is incredible as well yeah love coco all right let's go to our intermission and then we'll run through all the rest of the great movies and mediocre movies that came out in 2017 because we still have a lot to talk about but that was a great <laughs> breakdown of the top our top 15 hey great job man hey you, you did a great job as well before we continue, the best way to support Raiders of the Lost podcast is tell your movie friends and family members about us, use our coupon codes, and become a patron at patreon.com slash Raiders of the Lost podcast. You get awesome perks like weekly bonus episodes that every single patron has access to. You get a personalized message, personalized videos, $10, $25, and $100 tier patrons have access to our Discord. We're on there every day. We also do watch parties great film community we've built with our friends and friends $25 and $100 tier patrons get their own custom episode you pick the topic and we do it for you $100 tier patrons are also executive producers at on the episodes you hear your name at the end of every main episode as well as you get a watch party with just us and you and after three months of being a chosen one patron you get to come on the show for a fun guest segment patreon allows us to do the show full time so thank you so much for your support Raiders of the Lost podcast is also brought to you by our good friends at Manscaped.com. Use our coupon code Raiders of the Lost at checkout. You'll get 20% off and free shipping on your entire order today worldwide. Over 2 million guys are using Manscaped products. It's time you join the party, join the fun. Me and Anthony are on them. You're going to get on it too. It'll help you, keep, stay, help you stay groomed and looking fresh all year round. I highly recommend their lawnmower 4.0 trimmer. This thing is a rocket ship for your grooming needs. It has a 7,000 RPM motor. It's skin safe to the touch. Waterproof. Has a built-in light. Wireless charger. You can use it in the goddamn shower. It is incredible with the lights off. Their boxer briefs 2.0 are also wildly comfortable. They come in really cool designs, and they're such an upgrade to the boxer briefs that I was using before. They got some extra, they some extra space down there for you know, the family jewels and the junk and sold there even more comfortable than any of the other boxes I've ever bought or worn in my entire life. I love wearing my Manscaped briefs 2.0. So head to manscaped.com. You get all sorts of goodies besides lawnmower 4.0 groomer and briefs, deodorant, two-in-one shampoo, conditioner, body wash. We are obsessed with their products, the Weed Whacker 4.0 trimmer. Get everything they got or just get a couple things, but use our coupon code Raiders of the Lost. That's one word at checkout to get 20% off and free shipping worldwide. This episode is also sponsored by our great friends at MoviePosters.com. Use our special promo code Raiders10 at MoviePosters.com to get 10% off all of your orders today. They have a huge selection of pretty much every movie and TV show imaginable in their huge poster library as well as all sorts of sizes framing and even backlighting so whatever your poster needs are they got you covered we have a bunch of these amazing posters on our set and in our homes they are high quality very affordable and exactly what you need as a movie fan so go ahead and head on over to movieposters.com and use our promo code raiders10 to get 10 percent off your order today are you ready for this intermission anthony i'm ready i'm gonna try to stump you here movie quote competition let's go Believe me, the irony of being a blind art dealer isn't lost on me. Huh. Is it get out? Yes, sir. Nice. Nice. 
Looks like you failed and you're stumping. Yeah. Here's my quote. Honestly, you're a smart guy, though, so I, I figured you'd probably get it. <laughs> <laughs> I've been poor my whole life, like a disease passing from generation to generation, but not my boys, not anymore. Huh. Hmm. I've been poor my whole life. You did it in a southern accent. It's a southern accent, yeah. I've been poor my whole life, <laughs> but not my boys. <laughs> My arc broke your heart. <laughs> my heart. My heart. My heart. <laughs> Reference to the last episode. <laughs> what was it? The five hundred days of summer. Yeah, the episode. Yeah, I, I accidentally summer. spoke in a southern accent. <laughs> Broken my heart. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know. Hell or high water. Ah, uh, Chris Pine. Guess this movie release year. Broken Arrow. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, dun, dun. Ninety-six. Yes. Oh. Wow. This kid's two for two today. Feeling it. Guess this movie release year. Unstoppable. Chris Pine. T- Chris Pine today, huh? Yep. In light of the news, yeah. we're filming this the day after the ha- supposed to support the supposed, my guy. The supposed we don't know if it happened. Spit. Either way, I'm supporting my guy. Unstoppable. Two thousand and eleven. Close. Two thousand ten. <sighs> Nice try, nice try. All right, I think I'm gonna get you here. Movie pop quiz time. In the Matrix, what is Neo's apartment number? Oh shit. <clears throat> I'm gonna go with. I don't know, 112. Nope. What? 101. Ah, oh, the damn. one, one, oh. and also it's binary. Binary makes sense. That's that, that was obvious. <laughs> no, it's a tough question. Yeah, I guess. Because I think most people they can only think of three oh three because of the significance of that room. Why three oh three? Well that's the room where the phone is. Oh gotcha, gotcha, got in the apartment. Idiot. <laughs> Just kidding, you're not an idiot. You're over two, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a lead bomber, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> All right, early in his career, Chris Pine, obviously he got Star Trek, but around the same time, he auditioned for a huge movie for the lead role, but lost out to it. Do you know what that movie was? Who did he lose to? I can't tell you. (laughs) (laughs) It was around that time. Around that time? Was it 2007? Star Trek came out in 2009. 2009. What did he lose out to in 2009? Not he auditioned before the year 2009, but the movie came out in 2009. Okay, the movie so, came out in 2009. So he was auditioning for big movies. This was another huge movie he auditioned for. He didn't get it, but he got Star Trek. I wonder, is it like a Marvel movie? No. No, they weren't making that many back then. Yeah, it's just Iron Man 2008. Yeah. Um, I don't freaking know, man. Avatar. Avatar. Oh, you're right. A lot of people auditioned for that. No. And he was he he was auditioning unknown actors, and mm. Chris Pine was relatively unknown back then. Relatively unknown. All right, uh, who we got for haters of the week? So we got uh, we got uh, a bunch of real haters this week. <laughs> like we got real like because so what happened was on yeah, TikTok. Do you want to explain from our Star Wars Return of the Jedi episode? I simply just made a clip st- when I made this factual information where I stated that there. I, I asked Anthony in the episode of Return of the Jedi how many female characters can you name from the first two Star Wars movies? He could only name Leia. So I made a clip how there are hardly any female characters in those first two movies. And I was shocked at the amount of toxic dudes that were just like angrily commenting and just bashing us. It, was, it blew my mind. One guy was real bad. He wrote... Hold on, I screenshot it, I think. I put it in the story. He wrote... Write your own effing movie if you want. X, Y, Z in it. Like, shut your effing mouth. Like, holy crap, dude. Unreal. Someone someone wrote, um, they aren't, none of them are any good. The Asian was okay. Crazy. I was like, For the, what? The, the, the new trilogy. How, what is wrong with people? And like, a, lot of the, a lot of the comments are saying, like, it's a war movie. Most war movies have men. It's like, there are hardly any war scenes in this mo- in the first two. Like, the first movie, the half of that movie is just on Tatooine. What are you talking about? Yeah, and then, like, people were saying, what about Sly Snoods, who's, like, a... Un- Sly, uh, Sly Snoodles. Sly Snoodles, who's, the like, singer. a singer. In the, and, like, are you kidding me? You're going to say that person is, like, a, a legitimate character in the movie there in 30 seconds of the movie? Hey, we still love the movies. Yeah. We're just, I'm just making a fact that, like, you can't yeah. name any female characters besides And the Leia. whole point of your your 
point your whole point was that they've gotten be- so much better with inclusive uh, inclusivity and in, inclusivity yeah so i have trouble with that. that's a, <laughs> it's one of those words yeah man. it's one of those words um, uh canceled yeah <laughs> can't, <laughs> he can't, say can't even it. say it <laughs> <laughs> He's so against it, he can't say it. He can't speak it. <laughs> but you were saying, like, there's so many great female characters in the more recent ones, which is they've done a much better job of, and people were losing their minds. I was I was shocked. Just making them more prominent. Like, I was shocked. It's, it's pretty nuts. Yeah, it's insane. We got bashed big time for that clip. Whatever, bro. Wait until they, they see the one that I posted where all the female pilots were cut after they filmed scenes for it. <laughs> How are you going to defend that? Oh man, they'll find a way. Uh, do we have any unsubscribes? We have no, we have one because we just filmed, so I used them all up. But we have one from our pal Preston. Preston, shocked to hear Anthony say Return of the Jedi was his least favorite of the original trilogy. I would have thought it would be his favorite because all the subtitles from Jabba the Hutt. <laughs> I thought Anthony was a big fan of foreign cinema. Another film bro lie. Unsubscribe. That's, That's great. One. That's a good one. That's a good one, Preston. <laughs> Canceled. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Boom roasted. All right, we have a... Oh, we also have another... We have a real hater. Um, Nathan said, Something about this channel gives off the vibe of too manufactured. Too manufactured? Yeah. Why, because we have uh, cameras? On our YouTube. I don't know I don't know what that means. Too manufactured? You... But then CJ defended us. Our friend CJ said it. It said that it, it sounds like a couple of bros chatting about movies. <laughs> I was like, thanks, pal. <laughs> a couple of film bros. Yeah. All right, we have a great five-star review from Mikey Smith, a gold mine, insightful, hilarious, and wicked, wicked fun. Y'all are incredible. I've been wicked ca- fun. I've been catching up on all your episodes done on my favorite movies over the last couple months, and it's been so much fun. My buddy and I actually have my own movie podcast, not analysis, but still related to movies, and y'all have helped me so much when we discuss movies that y'all have covered. Anyways, y'all rock. Don't ever stop doing this podcast. Thanks, Thanks Mikey. Our competition. You wicked pisser guy. Just kidding. We wish you and your podcast the best. We're so glad that we've helped probably, hopefully, you talk about, what'd you say? Like a, a condensed version. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> helped you so much when discussing movies. We're so glad that we've helped you discuss movies. I'm sorry. I don't know what it is. You only just read it. Today, I cannot talk, man. I, can't, I don't know what's going on in my brain. Did you have enough coffee? I probably not. I should probably start having more than one cup in the morning. Yeah, man. I have two cups. Man, in the I morning. am just like a fog. Yeah, I've had two cups. I I'm feel a great. shell of myself. <laughs> Mikey, thank you so much for the review. You're the best. <laughs> Appreciate you. <laughs> On this day in film and TV history, it is September 22nd in 1955. Berlin's Britain's first commercial aired. It was for toothpaste. <laughs> in 1976 <laughs> in 1976 Charlie's Angels debuted on TV in 1989 debut in 1989 Baywatch debuted on TV now you're in your head about it in 1994 <laughs> Friends debuted on TV in 1999 The West Wing debuted on TV what is up with this day and debut man TV shows holy crap wow ready here we go with another one 2004 Lost debuted on TV nice in 2017 The Kingsman The Golden Circle was released and happy birthday to Bilbo Baggins and Billy Piper nice Billy from uh, Doctor, Doctor Who. Who my streaming recommendation is Rock and Rolla which got put on HBO Max it is not Guy Ritchie's best movie but it's still a lot of fun I like it a lot great cast my recommendation is Z for Zachariah it's a really great uh, dystopian film with Margot Robbie Chris Pine and she would tell us you for Nice. I haven't yeah. seen that. Is it, is it good? It's very good, yeah. I'll have to check it out. Yeah. But cool. All right, moving back into our episode of the films of 2017. <laughs> Got the S. We have a condensed version <laughs> like, of 2017. What is going on? Dude, I, I don't know what's going on. Let's All start right. with um, comic book movies. Yeah, so, so we have... I'll list them off. Yeah, I'll list them off. them off. So this year was actually pretty stacked. Spider-Man Homecoming, Logan, Wonder Woman, Thor Ragnarok, Gardens of the Galaxy Volume 2, and Joss Whedon's Justice League. Very successful year for bo- the box office. All these movies made a boatload of movie we- money. We got <laughs> Thor Ragnarok, <laughs> which was which is a favorite MCU movie. Helped change the tone of the MCU going forward into Infinity War and Endgame. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two is just so much fun. Spider Man Homecoming. We have the new version of Peter Parker in the MCU. Logan, we've talked about it plenty already this episode. But then Joss Whedon's Justice League. Which like just stinker. a sour taste in so many people's mouths. I love you always say sour about that movie. <laughs> I'm salty still, man. Still salty. I think Logan's the best of this bunch, but it's a very good bunch. And Tom Holland, obviously, super charming and terrific as Peter Parker. And Thor Ragnarok was a great addition. 
I, I was kind of uninterested in Thor until that came out, and I think he was too. Is that when he became your favorite Avenger? Yeah, probably. Yeah, probably. Yeah. You like funny guys. Yeah, I, th- I think Thor is my favorite. And then yeah. Wonder Woman was just a sensational film. I mean, we got this new cinematic reinvention of the character, and she's so good with Gal Gadot. And, you know, I think what what they did with that film and just set up the stage for what could have been, going forward, a great f- universe that they're just scrapping, it seems like. Obviously, she'll probably be in a third film and going forward, but... Yeah, I don't think... I haven't heard any word about a third film. But Wonder Woman's definitely one of the best DC movies, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, they did a they did a great job. Patty Jenkins knocked it out of the park. Really firing at all cylinders yeah. over there. But um, all these were good. None of them are... I mean, actually, Justice League was not good. Um, <laughs> it's a great year back. of superhero movies. But the the real version of Justice League is very good. So, But it was, it was solid, especially to get uh, a couple of new heroes and then... But I think Logan... Just takes the cake, man. Yeah, it's, especially the year. It's like one of the best comic book movies ever. It almost doesn't feel like a comic book movie. Yeah, that's it? what I like about it. It's yeah, just I really like tremendous. that. Yeah. All right, let's move on to franchise movies. So a lot of these are also kind of action adventure, but these are franchises that either it's the sequel or the third movie of a franchise, or kind of like you'll see we or have like fifth movie, like of a, a King franchise. Kong movies in here too, or Jumanji. So there's a bunch of movies that have had previous films. So we have John Wick two. Star Wars Episode Eight: The Last Jedi, Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Men Tell No Lies, Transformers, The Last Night, Kong Skull Island, Kingsman, The Golden Circle, The Fate of the Furious, The Mummy, this is the Tom Cruise one, and then Jumanji. I think John Wick 2 is the best of the, of the lot. This actually is, in, in terms of quality, it's not that great. Um, the Mummy was pretty bad. To Transformers, pretty bad. Transformers I didn't see. There's some cool moments in the Mummy. There's some cool action sequences. Yeah, but um, I really, I really, I'm so disappointed. What could have yeah. been with that Universal monster? I, I honestly didn't really like Kong Universe. Skull Island. I wasn't a big fan of that movie. Me neither. Um, it just it was cool. Yeah, but, yeah, it was all right. Um, Dead Man Tell No Lies. Giant Depp being Giant Depp. Javier did a good job as the villain. I think. I think, and also it was really, it was really well made. Last Jedi. I mean, I don't hate. I don't. I think it's. I think it's a good movie. And it's just stunning, visually stunning. Like the cinematography. Beautiful 35 millimeter film cinematography, plus the visual effects are really sensational. And I think the actors all did a really remarkable job in that movie. Uh, I think Daisy Ridley is terrific. John Wick two, I think, is really good, but I, I'd put it in, in last place for John Wick movies. Oh really? I think the last first place. I go first, third, second. But yeah. I haven't seen um, I haven't seen Jumanji. I've seen it. It's funny. It's pretty. It's actually better than you'd think, uh-huh. honestly. I enjoyed my myself when I watched it. Um, I hope I hope you did. <laughs> it's what you expect. Is exactly what I expected. Yeah. You know, it's funny. It's campy. Dwayne's just messing stuff up and messing people up, and then yeah. Jack Black's hilarious. So it's it's a pretty good fun. Time. I don't. I just never got around to watching it. I think I had like this stubborn mentality of loving the original so much I didn't want to watch it. I went into the this movie like I'm not gonna like this because uh-huh. of the OG, but I ended up. Yeah, it's a good time. Maybe I'll watch it. Sometime. Yeah, it's funny. Maybe I'll watch it. Sometime. It's just like one of those shut your brain off Friday night. Yeah. What, what am I gonna watch? Tonight? I just watched Jumanji. Yeah. But for franchise movies, I think it was kind of a weak year. Kind of. It's the all. Fate of the Furious. What's this? The the seventh, seventh? or the eighth? The Fate of yeah, the, the eighth. Furious. Yeah, for Fate with an eight. Is, is that nine? I don't even know, man. I don't <laughs> there's even. There's so know. many. Yeah, there's nine. There's nine now. I think. It's the eighth one. Eighth one. Yeah, I think they put the eight F eight. Yeah, Fate. Fate of yeah, yeah, the fate of the furious. Clever. Was this, this was the goodbye one to Paul Walker? I believe so. Yeah, yeah I think that that's the one with the um that ending. Really, yeah, the, the mummy was a big misstep. The mummy ruined Universal's plans Man, for monster stuff. What they stuff. could have done with that, the, yeah, the monster universe. It's the rare Tom Cruise misstep. Yeah, I he think hasn't I, made a bad movie since. after that. I think he like it was like losing a Super Bowl. Like I'm never gonna do that again. I think he's like I'm only gonna work with McQuarrie from now on. <laughs> yeah. That's it. I'm not working with anyone else. What's the thing with that movie? The mummy is it was a first time director. One of the writers of Lost. Um, I can't remember his name, but um, this was his first movie directing, and it was a two hundred million dollar movie. I don't think that first time directors should get big budgets like that. Even though even if you have Tom Cruise, like still that's a lot to take on. You're not proven. You don't even have a voice as, as a filmmaker. So that's a lot of money to give a first time. Obviously he had a, he had a lot of writing credits and producing credits and TV, but still for your first movie I think it might have that's the reason why. It's a lot of pressure. Let's move on to our action adventure category. How's that sound? I love action. We adventure. have King Arthur, Okja, Atomic Blonde, The Lost City of Z. American Made, The Dark Tower, 
Ghost in the Shell, The Hitman's Bodyguard, Power Rangers, The Foreigner, Bright, Geostorm, and Valerian. I forgot about Bright. This this has ups and downs. There's some good movies in this list. Uh, I think that uh, Lost City of Z is the best movie on this list. It's really fantastic. James Gray made it. Uh, Robert Pattinson's awesome in it. Tom Holland's awesome in it. And then you have a great lead performance from um, from Charlie Hunnam. This is a movie. That's a movie where I, I saw Pattinson in that. I was like, this guy can act his ass off. Like this guy's legit. He had been in a couple Cronenberg movies too. And then this was like I was like full full tilt on board for Pattinson as an actor after this. He's got a great beard too. <laughs> great beard. And then Atomic Blonde, Charlize Theron just kicked ass in that movie. It's great. That's a cool movie. Yeah. Like very eighties poppy yeah. soundtracks. A lot of fun. Really interesting filmmaking. James McAvoy is a great co lead in that as well. Um, one of the Deadpool directors made it. Yeah, uh, Tim Miller. Tim Miller. Tim Miller. Yeah, made Tim Miller made it. I think. Yeah, and then obviously King Arthur. Charlie Hunnam had a big year. Although both of his movies bombed, both King Arthur and Lost City of Z were big box office losses. Lost City of Z made no money, and King Arthur made some money, but not to even David come... Leach made it. David Leach, sorry. Yeah, who yeah, just so did uh, Bullet, Bullet Train. Train. So King Arthur was a big loss for the studio. They were planning a big franchise, and it never happened. The Foreigner was a great return of form for Jackie Chan. Yeah. That was a great Jackie Chan movie. Um, American Made, uh, Doug Lyman made it with Tom Cruise awesome movie underrated it's so good it's so funny it's like it's a great like drug biopic kind of one of those movies. smuggling like yeah. has like the same tone as like maybe like blow stuff something like that and you can tell tom like just did a bunch of plane flying yeah, yeah. probably he's like yeah, i'll do this movie i get to fly yeah. planes let's go and he's so good it, he's very charming and i really like that movie it's good I, I don't think a lot not a lot of people saw it yeah also uh that was a um box office done as well but really good if you guys i mean if you're getting into tom cruise like that's definitely something that you should watch if you haven't seen it and then there's some duds in here the dark tower with mcconaughey and idris elba not very good. It was a strange take on Stephen King's novel, which is much different from what they did in the movie. Um, oh, Okja is great. Bong, Bong Joon-ho, Joon-ho uh, his Netflix movie. Tilda, Jake Gyllenhaal. The act- Paul Dano. Yeah, Paul Dano, the actress, um, the young girl. She did a phenomenal job because she's acting with a CGI character most of the time, and she did a wonderful job in that movie. And I, I just love when Bong Joon-ho gets to make movies. It's a, it's a great time, so... Bright, I'm not sure. I'm still not sure how I feel about Bright. I saw Bright. it. I wasn't really a big fan. I didn't really like it. I, I didn't it, like I, it. Yeah. I wasn't... I, I thought it was going to be better than it was. It was the screenplay. Yeah. It was the screenplay. It was, it was a little underwhelming. I yeah. thought the idea was great. But then Geostorm, we have a disaster movie. Yeah. That's with... uh, um, With... uh, What's his name? Leonidas, right? Gerard Butler? Oh, let me check. I Geostorm... Think, yeah, I think that's Gerard Butler. Geostorm movie cast, we have... Yeah, Gerard. Yeah, Gerard Butler, yeah. Jim Sturgis too. They uh, what's funny is that that poster ripped off Inception's poster so badly. Yeah, a lot of people did. It's literally the Inception poster. It's pretty funny. Valerian, which one's that? I don't think I saw that. That's the one with uh, Cara Delevingne and um, oh, what's his name? Dane, 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 Dane Dean. I did see that. It wasn't good. Yeah, yeah. Luke Besson, uh, great filmmaker, but this one just kind of wasn't. It was, it. Yeah, it was. It's visionary, you know. And also we have Handsome Hawk in there as well, yeah. and Clive Owens in there so it's great cast and yeah you know you know what really threw me off with that movie dane dehan and carol Delevingne look a lot alike they look like they're like fraternal twins you think so yeah, yeah they kind of look alike they look like when i i was like they look like they're because they're a couple and i'm like they look like they're siblings yeah. to me i still respect the hell out of luke besson and his wildly original sci-fi adventure movies i mean the fifth, fifth element, element yeah you gotta do a solo episode yeah, on that soon that's like an awesome it. movie um, and then also, also, but I think it was just way too heavy relying on CGI. The Dark Tower, did you bring that up? Yeah. Yeah, that was a, that was a disappointment because that book's awesome. The they Stephen they King made book. it a sci-fi movie. Yeah. It is kind of a sci-fi story. Yeah, but like it's more it's more tech based in the movie mm-hmm. rather than it it's more supernatural. In the I was book. just I was just disappointed by that film because yeah. I mean how do you I mean you got Idris Elba as the, as the lead character and and I love that book. This a it's a great yeah. series. Um, and he was perfectly cast, but like it just didn't work out the approach. And Ghost in the Shell, it's pretty good. I think it's good. It's good. Yeah, uh, it's a decent adaptation yeah. of the anime. I think it's good. Scar Scarjo Scarjo. So she's I like that great. movie. I like it. It was better than the other one. The um the one she did the year after the big action one, where she's the sent the program. Lucy. Yeah, Lucy. Yeah, I liked it better than Lucy. Yeah, I, mean, I think it was good. But yeah, pretty decent year for action adventure. I think King Arthur's really underrated too. I like that movie a lot. Yeah, I love King Guy Arthur. Ritchie's one. So, yeah, Guy yeah Charlie had him a Guy good Ritchie's year. A guy. He had a good year. Let's move on to horror. 
pretty good year. Pretty yeah, it was it's pretty decent. We have Oh, I love this year actually. So we have It came out. That was wildly successful. Great, great adaptation of the Stephen King novel. And then we have Happy Death Day, great original kind of Groundhog Day horror movie. Life, Jake Gyllenhaal and Ryan Reynolds in the space adventure, which has a great ending. Alien Covenant, which was it's pretty good. It's I it's I good. like Prometheus and I like Alien Covenant. I know a lot of hardcore Alien fans don't like these movies, but I enjoyed them. I think it's they're just good. worth it because of the filmmaking is sensational and Michael Fassbender is so great in both movies. But I think film, filmmaking alone, I like Prometheus and Alien Covenant. The Girl with All the Gifts, which is a great, great horror uh, book. I highly recommend reading or listening to an audiobook if you if you like horror mo- horror books. And it's a vampire zo- zombies or no zombies. vampire yeah, zombies zombies. Yeah, zombies. zombies. Yeah, Rose Byrne stars in it. Yeah, uh, and uh, Glenn Close as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, really great novel. Check that out for sure. Uh, it comes at night, which is, you know, I think that it's a little bit of an overrated horror film from A twenty four. It's solid. It's decent, but I don't put it in top tier. A twenty four. It had a great first half, but then the I'm third not, act it was yeah. it was very underwhelming. The not third in love act. with the ending of that yeah. movie. Gerald's Game is a wild concept oh yeah for a yeah movie. so yeah. that's when the the wife and husband are like on a little vacation Carla Gugino. and they're yeah. they're he like ties her up to be like sexy yeah. during for like consensually like Bruce ties Greenwood her up, yeah. and he has a heart attack and that, the rest of the movie is her tied up to the yeah. bed it's crazy mayhem which is a Steven Yen uh horror film jigsaw saw origins origins, origins. kind of movie Annabelle creation Annabelle it was, is it was a love good. franchise. That, that was a good one. That was a successful, yeah. successful little indie horror film yeah. for sure. For the spinoff, it was they did a good job. Jeepers Creepers three came out, did not do well, and The Snowman, which is an adaptation from a Swedish book, I believe, yeah. starring Michael Fassbender, possibly the worst major film of the year. Hundred <laughs> percent. So I love Happy Death Day. It's really good for fans of horror. You gotta watch it. It's Groundhog Day with the slasher film and it's really funny and the lead actress does a phenomenal job she carries the film it's it's really so much fun i couldn't recommend it enough i love that movie it was fantastic what a great stephen king adaptation i think it's really up there for greatest stephen king adaptations of all time the cast of kids is great and then Skarsgård as pennywise was really perfect the design of the character Really, like, I think modern movies, it's one of the best movie monsters we've ever seen. Oh, so much. I, so I really love that movie. And then Life is really good. But I think Happy Death Day and It, really sensational horror films. I think th- for horror, this, like, usually horror is, like, there's only a couple of really great ones. But I think there's some really good ones in this list. There's five really Life good movies. Life is really good, too. Life is great. And then The Girl with All the Gifts is great, too. So there's well, some see, good ones. I think with Life, it's, it's a great first act. And then it kind of... It sort of loses me a little bit, but the ending is really what sold that movie for, for me. For me, I was with it the whole time. It's I liked good. it. I it's, liked it a lot. It's really disturbing. Yeah. A really great idea, Rebecca too. Ferguson's also in it, too. Cast is stacked. Yeah. They did a great job, but the movie monster is terrific. But It's, it's worth seeing Ryan yeah. Reynolds and um, Jake Gyllenhaal together in a movie. <laughs> it, it completely is. I was sold. I'm like, I'll watch them just— And Rebecca. It's yeah, a, Rebecca. It's a beautiful cast right there. <laughs> but um, Very attractive yeah. cast. <laughs> um, Happy Death Day is my favorite on that list. Oh, yeah. I like it more than it. It's my favorite on that list. I think it's incredible. Next up, we'll move into the drama romance section. Ooh. And small small list right here. We have A Ghost Story, Lady Macbeth, Beauty and the Beast, The Space Between Us, and Disobedience. Nice range of films. A Ghost Story, I think, is a special movie from 2017 that not a lot of people have seen coming from A24, starring Casey Affleck and Rooney Mara. It was directed by oh, what's his name? Um, hold on, I forgot. Oh, I forgot his name too. Uh, he did David the Lowry. Knight. David Lowry. He did Green Knight. Mike Lowry. David Lowry is a really great director, and Ghost Story I think is special. It's very romantic, but also intense themes of what happens in life after death, and exploring those concepts, and also exploring love, how it lives with us and transcends lifetimes. And it, it's a really beautiful movie. Nothing and, like it. And just like yeah. to boldly put your lead a- actor on it, covered Under in a sheet, sheet for the majority of the movie is just like, who the hell would do that besides David Lowry and pull it off? It works. It works. It's All, really special. Yeah. Also, Lady Macbeth, uh, Florence Pugh's breakout movie, really sensational. Her performance is amazing. Uh, I watched it in theaters and I was like, she's going to be a star, whoever mm-hmm. this is. I'd never seen her before. And now she is, obviously. And she's so loved, but she 
is extremely, extremely talented. I think she's one of the best work actors working right now. And if you haven't seen this and you're a fan of Florence, watch this movie ASAP. She'll blow you away. I think it's still her best performance. And then we have Beauty and the Beast starring Emma Watson playing Princess Belle. Belle. And then The Space, space Between Us. Oh, it's a cute movie. It's a, it's a really yeah, great Yeah, the kid concept. who grew up on Mars yeah, and, and then he uh, comes makes it back to Earth. And then he, uh, he has trouble um, acclimating to the environment, but he falls in love with a girl that's been his pen pal. If he stays there, he's going to yeah, die. It's, it's very cute. It's really sad. Movie. And then Disobedience, which is... Rachel Weisz and Rachel McAdams. It's set in the Hasidic Jewish community, which is very um, private and isolated and... Traditional. Traditional. And they have basically their own like culture within American cities and... They stick together, but also they're very strict, and uh, women um, in those communities have very little rights, and um, these are two women who are married, and they are in love with each other, and they begin a romance um, secretly, and it's really great. The two actresses are fantastic. Moving on to our drama section, we have You Were Never Really Here, I, Tonya, Molly's Game, Hostels, The Post, Thank You For Your Service, Strong, Marshall, The Florida Project, Detroit, Papillon, Only the Brave, Roman J. Israel Esquire, and Gifted. What a stacked a great list, list of drama films. Great list. I mean, just And this right is not even including the ones we put in the top 15. Yeah, You Were Never Really Here is really, really good movie with Joaquin Phoenix. Yeah, Lynn Ramsby. Lynn Ramsby is an amazing director. I, Tonya was great. Molly's Game is great. Hostels was great. I mean, we have Detroit here from Catherine Bigelow and Strong. Is a really great story. The Post from Spielberg, really awesome movie. Yeah, Strong is uh, yeah. Jake Gyllenhaal playing someone who has lost their legs. Yeah, the Boston, Boston Marathon Boston one. Drama. He's awesome in it. Also, Tatiana Maslany is in it. Uh, Gifted starring Chris Evans. J. Roman Israel is a Denzel Washington film. Really great. Only the Brave. And also, Thank You for Your Service. Great. Well, Thank You for Your Service is a war film starring Miles Teller. Then Only the Brave is that yeah. firefighter movie. He was in both of them. Yeah, right? he was in both of them. They're, only the Brave is really good with uh, Josh Brolin. Uh, I watched it after Top Gun Maverick because I was like, what else has Kaczynski done? And, besides uh, Tron. Yeah, besides Tron. He made, he made this movie. It didn't get. No one really talks about it, but it's really good. It's He's really a great good. director. Yeah. really is. Uh, the Florida Project starring Willem Dafoe was excellent. From maybe Sean the best, Baker. Maybe yeah. the best indie film of the year, 2017. It was so damn good. What's unique is Sean Baker, he likes to set his movies in real areas and locations. And so a lot of the people you see in this movie are just people that live there or are locals. And he makes some characters of his films. It's really terrific. And I love Willem Dafoe for acting in this movie, like one of the most famous actors alive. And he's like, I'm going to do this small indie movie. And I, I saw an interview where he's, he's like, he's fascinated by the approach of using real people in movies, and that's what really drew him to the role. Then Molly's Game was Aaron Sorkin's directorial debut. It's a really good movie. I just think for me, it ran a little too long. It's it's like almost two and a half hours long. That is long, but yeah. But Jessica Ch Chastain's awesome in that role, and that is a crazy true life story. Hostel is just an excellent movie. Yeah. That cast is stacked, you know? Yeah, Timmy's Christian, even in that yeah, movie, yeah, Christian Bale. Christian Bale's amazing in that movie. I really like I, Tonya. I think that might be my favorite on this list, I, Tonya. Margot really proved herself as one of yeah. the most talented actors with this film. She's she, really yeah, incredible. She was great in, Wall, in um, <laughs> Wolf of Wall Street, obviously. I thought you were going to say Wally. Yeah, <laughs> I almost said Wall Wally. Street. I almost just said Wall Street. But with this, like sh the lead, great accent, amazing performance. She has such a range. I think this movie, for me, was like, okay, she is a high-caliber talent in... Definitely one of the best actors working today. She's terrific, and uh, I love that movie. And then Chadwick Boseman in another great biopic film, Marshall from uh, Reginald Hudlin. Mm -hmm. Very good, he yeah. He played so many real-life people. What an actor and powerhouse he was. And, uh, yeah, again, Detroit from Oscar-winning director Catherine Bigelow. Really great list of and the, just dramatic films. The Post is really good. Spielberg movies, he's, he's made so many, but, like, it's hard to be, like— He's made so many great ones, it's hard to even put them on a list, but like, this is a really good movie. Yeah, it's, it's Steven. Yeah. Steven Spielberg. It's, it's Steve. 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 Steve Madden. Madden. Let's move on to mystery crime. <laughs> we have Good Time, Murder on the Orient Express, Wind River, Hot Summer Nights, and All the Money in the World. Great directors on this list. I mean, we have Ridley Scott. Yeah, two there. movies this year. And then we have Good Time from the Safety Brothers, which is such a good movie and really great debut film from them. So another great... It's not their debut. I'm sorry. Yeah, it was their second, second film. Yeah. My bad. It's okay, man. I, I, I you knew it, though. You know that. 
Yes, I do know yeah. that. I know that. Um, Murder on the Ori Orient Express was excellent. And then Wind River is such a great modern western. It really is. All the Money in the World is awesome. Really Scott's movie. It's really good. Uh, and it's a fascinating story. Uh, good Time, obviously, is terrific. And then I love Murder on, on the Orient Express. Kenneth Branagh did a terrific job filming on 65mm film. It looks stunning. Uh, he's great as Ben as um <laughs> Hercule Perot. I almost said Ben Wamp. Hercule Perot. <laughs> Hercule Perot. Uh, this is a great movie. I think Good Time is really special. I'd never seen anything like it. And then I like with that movie. I think Pattinson got a lot of respect from audiences. He had a big year in terms of acting. All right, let's go, let's move on to uh, comedies. How about that? Let's let's do it. <laughs> Here we got the death of Stalin. The Disaster Artist, Logan Lucky, Downsizing, Suburbicon, T2, Train Spotting, The Big Sick, The Meyerowitz Stories, Ingrid Goes West, The Square, and Baywatch. It was a good year for comedy. Some of these are like drama comedies, like The yeah. Square is like a black comedy, so The Meyerowitz Stories is like a drama comedy. Yeah, Bombback made that. And then The Death of Stalin is a great dark comedy. That's I, the best one. I, I think it's the best one on this list, The Death of yeah. Stalin. I, I don't think a lot of people know about this movie, but I highly re recommend watching it. It is such a great film. The Disaster Artist, another great true story. Uh, James Franco. Yeah, that got nominated for Best Picture. Tommy Wiseau is just great. It's such a funny movie. Crazy Stranger than fiction, real life story. He did a good job. Logan Lucky, Steven Soderbergh. We got Daniel Craig, and this is with Channing Tatum and and uh, I said no peeking. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, what's his name? Kylo Ren, Adam Driver, Adam Driver. <laughs> Matt Damon had an had an uh, a, yeah, a forgettable yeah, year. He's in year. both dines, downsizing and Suburbicon. Suburbicon was just a dud from George Clooney. Then downsizing yeah. is just like a mediocre like comedy. Yeah, I mean they're both di great directors. Um, I'm not sure. It was both the scripts. It was the scripts. And Matt Damon was in them because he's he's pals with both guys. And so Alexander Payne made Suburbicon. I mean, downsizing. They just didn't work, you know? I think the concept for downsizing was right. I just think something about the execution just wasn't... It, just, it wasn't it just funny is what it was. It, it wasn't yeah. funny. Yeah. It's, it, and, but Alexander Payne is a great director. Yeah. It's just... He missed. And George Clooney, he, he's, he is hit or miss as a director. Yeah. But he then always has been. Danny Boyle making the sequel to Train Spotting with T2 Train Spotting was so much fun to see these characters back in action again. Myra's stories is very funny. The Ingrid, big sick is very good. Yeah, very sick. Yeah. Camille is stars in that, and then um, Ingrid goes west. Aubrey Plaza starting to be like a lead actress in, in movies, which is really great because she's so talented and loved. And the square was just a great black comedy. Yeah, Elizabeth Moss is great in it. Then our final category. Here we go. Animated. We have Coco, the Lego Batman movie, Loving Vincent, Smurfs, The Lost Village, Cars Three, Boss Baby, Despicable Me Three. The Emoji Movie and Justice League Dark. It's a pretty weak year. <laughs> Besides Coco in the Lego Batman and Loving Vincent, weak year. It's a pretty weak year. Yeah, I think Coco is without a doubt the best on this list and one of the best of the year. Uh, it it it's, it seems like yeah, the Smurfs franchise never really worked out with animated. Um, Cars three kind of milking it. It was pretty good, but I did not see the Emoji Movie because the trailers seemed ridiculous to me. Or Boss Baby. But I've I've read enough about them to know that they're not like really that beloved of movies. But I think Coco, really sensational animated film. And I think Loving Vincent is highly unique and really beautiful. Yeah. It was 125 artists made 65,000 frames of oil paintings to make that film. Amazing. So it's Amazing. really stunning, visually beautiful film to translate Vincent Van Gogh's Vincent Van Gogh's art to a story and it's it, i think it's pretty special and unique so i i think that's a terrific one as well and that wraps the that's movies it, yeah. of 2017 like the notable that's ones. an epic year if we missed any let us know yeah. i I, did, I think i did a pretty good job i think you did gathering a everything job. worth talking you did about. a great job condensing everything yeah i condensed it for this episode but that was a lot of fun what a goddamn year uh, i think other years we have to talk about obviously you're gonna be like 1976 2014 but, I mean, you can kind of do it with, with many years, like all the great movies. But there are some outliers, like 1999. I think 2017 is a contender for like a year like 94. 94, 94. We'll, we'll talk about for sure. There are special years. And I think this was recent years, the most special year in the last like 10 years. 2014 was a great one too, but yeah. this one was great. Great pick. Thanks, man. Yeah. It was a fun episode. Hope you all enjoyed it. This condensed version. Let of... us know what your favorite movie from 2017 is. I'm and curious. if we missed any, let us know. Uh, I will re 
He'll beat himself up I'll over it for it a year. Somehow. He'll have nightmares about it. I will have nightmares about it. <laughs> Thanks so much for tuning in to Raiders of the Lost Podcast. Become a patron today at patreon.com slash Raiders of the Lost Podcast. Tell your movie friends and movie family members about us. Word of mouth is the best way for us to grow. So thanks so much for watching and listening all around the world. Take care, y'all. This episode of Raiders of the Lost Podcast has been executive produced through Patreon by our amazing Chosen One patrons, Calvin Cam, Lauren Smertz, Cody Moen, John Agras, Tyler McFly, Anthony DeMeo, and Becca Keene. Thank you so much for contributing to our show. Thanks so much for tuning in to Raiders of the Lost Podcast. Be sure to subscribe if you're new. Hit the like button. Leave a comment. Find us on all audio streaming platforms, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, wherever you listen to podcasts, you can find us. Find us on Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, Raiders of the Lost Podcast. Be sure to check out one of these other videos right here for more content on our favorite films and breaking down all kinds of movie content. Thanks so much.